Hey platform, I'm Flo and today we're going to talk about my book, How to Have Feminist Sex. Losing your virginity doesn't have to be a big deal. It's not even really a thing because you lose loads of virginities throughout your life. The first time you kiss someone is a kind of losing your virginity and the first time you have sex with someone, the first time you do anything sexual with someone. These are all tiny virginities that we lose throughout our life and there's no point putting the pressure on like, okay, so the first time that I have like vaginal sex with a man, that's when I lose my virginity. That sexual occasion doesn't need to be any more important or less important than any other time you have sex in your life. And hopefully you will have so much better sex than the first time you do it. That's the important thing is having great sex in your life and it doesn't, doesn't matter where that started from. You shouldn't believe everything you see in pornography because these guys are literally professionals. It is, it's acting, it's like the movies. Like We don't believe everything that we see in spy dramas. We don't think that actual MI6 spies are like James Bond. Or maybe if you do, you should reassess because they're probably not. They probably blend in way better. But anyway, people in porn, they spend their entire lives trying to be these like human sex dolls and that's great for them and they are like living their best life doing that. But we are just normal people who have sex on the weekends. We can't compete with that level of professionalism. They're also doing sex for the camera, not for themselves. So they're doing stuff that looks good on a camera but might not actually feel that good. So the sex that you have at home is gonna be like messier and maybe less neat, but it'll probably feel way better. And that's the important thing. Becoming more body positive is really tricky. It's not like something you can just like click your fingers and be like, oh my God, suddenly I think I'm gorgeous. You have to make like an active decision in your mind to be like, actually, I'm gonna stop hating my body because really there's better things to do with my life. And I think that you just have to suddenly realize that we are projected so many media images of just one type of body. And that is not the type of body that most people have. And it's not even the type of body that like everyone finds attractive. Whatever you're selling, there's going to be someone who wants to buy it, basically. You're not necessarily going to be happier either if you have this perfect body. That is like a lie that like capitalism has sold us. <laughs> <laughs> to make yourself love your body more, getting bad contract. You should just start by just accepting it and be like, okay, this is the body I have and it does. I don't necessarily have to change it to be happier. Maybe I don't think it's beautiful right now, but I, I'm really proud of what it can do. It gets me up every day. And if you start like that, then one day you might say, oh, actually, I think that my little tummy is actually really cute. And I think that it can be a positive attribute to my body and look as good as a flat tummy can, just in a different way. And I really recommend like surrounding yourself with images of people that don't look like Victoria's Secret models. like follow body positive influencers on Instagram if you have social media because they do like a fantastic job of promoting and normalizing sexy images of bodies that we don't see online and I think that's a really useful thing you can do it certainly helped me a lot also talk to yourself like you would your best friend you'd never say to your best friend like oh my god you look so fat in that dress and you wouldn't think that either you'd probably think that they're beautiful because they're your best friend Unless it's a very, very ugly dress, in which case you wouldn't wear it. Be kind to yourself, um, start slow and just accept where you can at the moment and just build on that and surround yourself with images of beautiful images of people who look like you. Consent is giving someone permission for them to do something to you and that could be to have sex with you, to touch you, to take your picture, loads of different things. And the general idea of consent is really simple. We, we practice it every day in everyday conversation. When you ask someone, would you like a cup of tea? You're asking cons like their consent for you to make them a cup of tea. But suddenly when sex is involved, everything gets a lot more complicated because people have a habit of assuming that the person they're with wants to do the same things that they want to do. And that's not always the case. In fact, often it's not the case. We just need to get into the habit of checking that what you want to do is what the other person wants to do. And this can be like fun and hot and sexy to be like, do you want me to go down on you? And then the other person hopefully goes, yes. Or no, and that's also fine. These clues, like, it's not as simple as yes or no because that's not how humans communicate. We tend to communicate in kind of excuses and non-verbal clues 
And you have to be sensitive to that. At the end of the day, if you're not sure, you can just ask. And I think we need to normalise asking for consent in sexual encounters as something that just happens and isn't awkward and is actually great and kind of hot.